Okay, we've created our simple name weave. Now we want to move on to something a little bit more complex. So we'll go back into our auto fill utility, and this time we'll um, select a bit more complex image like this footballer trout. So once again, we simply move around, select any areas of background which we want to exclude and um, this time we're going to go through and select a number of colors that we want to include in our palette. And we're going to select many more colors than we actually want to include in the weave. It just makes it a little bit easier for Picture Weave to determine um, the closest match. So we just go around, select F3, and you can see these colors are automatically being selected from our palette down here. Um, so move around into the significant areas, anywhere where you see different shades. As I said, we can select a few too many rather than a few too little. Now, the background image that you use will have a... Um, an effect on the success or uh, otherwise of this uh, particular function. The less shading the better, uh, in particular the background. If you've got numerous shades that you're trying to exclude it means that the uh, program has to try and determine uh, is it a background colour or should it be a, uh, a foreground colour one that you want to include. So we've selected our colours, we hit um, process and then uh, once again we simply wait a while for Pick to Weave to go through and uh, draw up our grid. Okay, so now we've finished um, processing our weave. We can close this window and return to our main window. And there we see a, um, a layout of our trout. Uh, scaling up and get, we can get a bit more detail. Now you'll see there's quite a bit of detail in there in terms of various colours and so forth. As I said earlier, there may actually be too much too much colour. We may want to replace some of that uh, to reduce the uh, the colour count because we've got about 10 layers there at the moment. Um, oh, sorry, 8 layers, about 10 colours. So if we were to select um, something like this colour here, you can see it's 1869 Madeira, um, we could actually replace that with another colour close to it such as this um, gold good broad. So if we go edit exchange colours and then we find um, the good broad thread and then we're looking for 0200 And you can see it's gone through and replaced all instances of that colour with the other colour. Uh, likewise, these shades on the end here, um, which is our 226 Fishhawk, we select that and um, we're going to change that to the 0340 Gold Good Broad. So, edit exchange colours. Find our good broad thread uh, 0340. Okay, so that immediately reduces our colors down. We haven't yet reduced our layers. Uh, I'll just scale back down so we can get a bit more of an indication what uh, what else we might need to replace so by going through and um, adjusting our colors to reduce the total number we can get still quite a good representation of our fish without 
having too complicated a weave pattern. Uh, if I fill in the background here now, I'll just do a quick preview on that um, pattern as it stands. Um, and there's still a few areas where we can uh, and change a few colors you see a few spots and so forth that can be fairly uh, fairly easily adjusted out so you can see by using the autofill the bulk of our work has been done for us uh, and it's simply a matter now of adjusting individual areas to suit um, suit our purposes these two colors here for instance 1259 and 1744 very very close so we can uh, select 1259 for instance and change it to uh, MP1754 which is the dear poly neon now I'm not concerned at the moment whether I have these threads in my um, stock holdings or not I'm simply reducing the number of colors in the overall weave down to a manageable level and then I can exchange the colors in this weave to ones that I do actually have in my uh, in my stock holding uh, now I'll just go uh, re recount the thread colors used and you can see we've reduced our layers back to five now from the initial eight so um, quite a significant reduction uh, always good to work in 100% ratio uh, and you can see here there's there's various spots on this weave where there's, there's color changes that are probably unnecessary um, that are just going to make life a bit hard for us uh, this particular color here the 1054 Madeira could quite easily be Change for the 9005 Peter, I would suggest. So we'll do that. So there's our uh, completed weave. You can see we've just done a little bit of touch up work down around the mouth here, a little bit on the eyes, and we've just kept swapping colours out uh, just to adjust the detail down. So we've still got our spots and so forth which are so typical of a trout but we're not going to have multitudes of thread changes which make it very hard to do um, to complete the weave. So by um, filling in our background here we can create a screenshot which I've uh, done just here. And there you can see roughly what the, um, the finished weave is going to look like. And you can even print that out in the, um, in the actual size. If we see here, our design height is going to be about 16 millimeters in height, 5 eighths of an inch. Um, when we go to our preview screen, we turn off fit to page, we can adjust this to get about 16 millimeters in height and if we print that out we've got an actual size um, layout of our Wii which we can position on our rod to find out where the center line is going to be and also to see just how it's going to look before we commit to um, the many hours it might take to create this Wii. So that's um, a quick rundown on the pick to weave um, autofill function uh, not it's not my preferred method of creating complex weaves but it certainly is um, a handy tool for doing your more simple uh, cartoon type images and uh, names and also just for getting a uh, for getting the majority of the work out of the way before you um, touch up to create a more complex weave we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to seeing your work on Pictoway.